Lake Water, we do have a pastor here back there. And we're going to sing our call to worship this morning, which is my tribute. You join me. to do that so uh, that that's a cool thing hey be sure and get those today and then i'm going to say the other flowers the other arrangements are from uh rhonda calhoun we had her service here yesterday and other than don't fight for them but know that rick would like different people here at the church to have these today center ones are daisies so don't take those or have to tackle you Okay, uh, but but the other ones are, are are for you to take and enjoy and don't fight over them, but don't leave them here. It would be helpful because they are beautiful. I took one yesterday. I got first dibs because he said that, and he he was here today worshiping again. That was neat for Rick to come today. His sister was with him, and uh, we really lifted up him in this time of transition. They're having the internment tomorrow in Oklahoma, so road trip. <laughs> uh, so keep them in your prayers. Uh, I'll get to, to that those in a minute, but I was really hoping you'd be here, and so I'm glad you are. I know Tuesday you weren't feeling that well, so I was concerned. Uh, you know, uh, you always love somebody because she always has that wonderful smile and everything like that. And I walked in Tuesday and she was uh, quilting, and right from the bat, it wasn't the vibrant smile. I said, "How you doing, Daisy?" And she said, "Not feeling well today." And it's like I could already check that box, you know, uh, to know that just because it wasn't her usual smile or usual self. So I'm glad you're doing better uh, and that you're here today. That's a blessing. To let you know on the announcement front that uh, this Tuesday we have Celebrate Recovery. It's an awesome ministry. Appreciate those people that help make that happen. Really see life change. We'll see transformation through that ministry and uh, keeping that going uh, you know, through the years. They're just they had, I did test me here. I didn't do good when I first came because one of the things of Celebrate Recovery years, what's, what we say here, what happens here, who's here, stays here. And then everybody says, here, here. So me as the pastor, I have to be real careful because I want to share with you things off of that ministry, and I can't. I, 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 I did that a little bit at first, and one of the, it was either Dean or Kyler came to me and very graciously said, Pastor Bud, what we say here, what happens here, who's here, stays here. So I, I have to be careful. But it's a great ministry, and we appreciate that. On Wednesday, the handbells. No choir, but handbells at 7. 7 o'clock. So the handbells are going to keep going. We'll require them soon or resume soon, but this this Wednesday is handbells. Okay? There's no rice and beans this week preparing for faith in action. We still have enough from last time, but Friday morning we have set up on Friday morning at 10 o'clock, and that's always very important, getting the things set out and getting those things done on Friday before. 
Then Faith in Action is this Saturday, 9.30. We begin meal preparation and getting everything set up. We open the doors at 10. They start lining up outside, I think, as early as 9 o'clock. They start lining up because when we get here 9.30 or before 9.30, there's already people standing in line. So they, they are thankful for what we do, and it's a great ministry. Uh, appreciate Gil and Candy and their work. Uh, we did 134 children for Christmas blessings. 134. Every one of those children gets six to eight gifts. So do the math on that. There was a lot of wrapping going on this Christmas. We also had a really interesting thing because one of the families that's associated with our church we take all the bags and put them in a garbage bag, okay? One of the families associated with our church, they dumped out the bags and $80 fell out. of the. And so I appreciate the family calling us saying, hey, there was $80, you know, they couldn't. And we actually just added $20 to it. So let's round it off to 100 and know God blessed you because we have no idea where that came from. And so I'm sure maybe, I, how who knows how $80 got in that garbage bag. But praise God for that. And we don't really know, but his provision. I do know that that family was going to have trouble paying their rent in January. I know that. And I guess God knew that. And they're still there and pray, praying for that. I'm hoping to check in on that this week. Okay. Hey, any of you that help with uh, Newgate Breakfast, let me tell you that the Newgate Breakfast is going to be Saturday, February the 4th, and that is the week that Dean and I will be gone to the uh, conference, so be mindful of that. Now, here, here's a strange one for you, okay? Bingo for backpacks, all right? January the 27th, I, I think that is, that, is that? Yes, the 27th. Yeah, but I'm saying, what day of the week is that? Friday. Friday. That's what I was trying to, uh, because it didn't fit the right time. So it's a Friday, January 27th at 6 o'clock. We, we don't want anybody giving us lawsuits or any hassle. We're trying this. We don't know if it's legal. We think it is. You, you, you buy a bingo card, and then there's prizes and a lot of fun things, and we, we haven't cleared it through any thing we're just wanting to have fun together and any money that's raised is going to backpacks to only come if you're cool with it <laughs> uh, and and we're giving it a shot and seeing how it goes so it will be a fun evening on the 27th and any money that is made is going to go toward the backpack program the backpack program it looks like we're done with the grants. Last year we got $8,000 in grants. This year we only got like $4,000 in grants. Last year we were doing about 120 youth and children every week. This year we're doing 140 children every week. Last year the back, each backpack meal cost a certain thing. Now everyone costs more. And so we're praying for the backpack ministry over the course of this, uh, this spring and trusting God to provide. And it looked like a good way to have fun. We are, we have a container in the back because we are collecting scarves, gloves, hats, and socks uh, and toboggans. Yeah, those are hats, toboggans. So yeah, glory to God. Uh, no, don't bring your sled, okay? Uh, so we're collecting those to be given and I think we're gonna take those to Newgate, I think, when we go uh, there. This, this week is not meetings week, but we start on, on the 16th will be the beginning of meetings week, and those are going to be important. And we're still in the process of finalizing our nominations. We've had a few decline and different things, so working on that to get that filled out. Any other announcements that we need to make today? I think we covered it. All right. Uh, we, yeah, we go with that. Let's stand today and worship the Lord. Give Him our praise. Sing the Lord of the day.
wondering if y'all saw the person's name Mel in there. Yeah. <laughs> Our affirmation of faith this morning is the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we're really lifting up Rick. Uh, and it was a beautiful service. It was a beautiful day uh, with the meal after for the family. And just appreciate everybody in the church that, that was a part of making that happen for Rick. So we continue to lift up Rick. I encourage you to pray for please Stephanie Berglund, Jason and Stephanie. Stephanie's mom's funeral will be on Saturday of this week in California. And uh, just heavy hearts for them and it's been really hard on their family too for Jason and Stephanie and Grayson so we're remembering to lift them up and her mom's name was Nancy and that funeral will be this coming Saturday please remember those other joys or concerns that we have today yes uh, Chris so he would probably not want me to do this but he should have woken up and come to church so Jack came home Friday and a lot of you have, have prayed for my family and you've seen my son grow up uh, and so on Friday night he came home and told us that uh, he has uh, gotten a job at Johnson Space Center uh, in Houston. Awesome! Yes! Because we've been praying for that for sure. Yes! So yeah, it's something that he wanted to do since he was a little kid and now he's going to work on a, a space station program uh, for a space station that's going to orbit the moon. Wow, so that, is part of mission. that is way cool. We're just over the moon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. no, that's all. That pray. Thank you, Lord. We've definitely been praying for for the job thing, and then that, and that's a wonderful place to live. My my dad was pastor at Clear Lake United Methodist Church for over seventeen years, which is right down in you know the NASA you know NASA. It's interesting to say NASA because there's also a Nassau Bay, but it's the NASA area. And it's really great. That'll be a great place to live, too. That's, that's a wonderful place down there. So we celebrate that. Good news. Uh, I dated a girl that her dad worked, you know, on NASA stuff. And he said, if you ever need help with math, you know. And so one day I you know, needed help. And it was pretty advanced math. And it was just, you had to look in the back to get the formulas, you know. And so I said, yeah, I'm doing that one on that formula. And I was about to look at the back, on the back, and he started, you know, just writing it out, you know, from memory, which I know is nothing for a Nassau scientist, but the formula was about that long. And he had, it, you know, he had all those formulas just memorized. And you're like, holy smokes, man. Yeah, so that's, he's in that category. That's an awesome thing. And I'm, I'm so thankful because definitely, definitely been praying uh, for that. For, for the job job thing or school, whichever, and he seems like he was ready for the job. So that's so good. Yes. Yeah, Greg. We have a joy. Uh, Frank Meyer, Mimi's older brother, 
We've been praying for him for several weeks. For his health, yes. They finally found what his problem is, and they fixed it. Okay. He's back up on his feet and doing well. So that is a, the prayers that went forward for him. That is a glorious thing. Thank you, Lord, for that answer to prayer. Yes. Ron. Uh, my neighbor, uh, Kendall, was a fan. Uh, he had a skull of cancer. And I guess this week he had a skull of cancer. He's uh, going to be out of his All right. Be praying for that and for the prognosis on that for sure. Definitely praying. We can always continue to lift up David and Beth and you and Larkin uh, in that journey and appreciate how Dean keeps that on our Facebook. If you do that to get the updates and to know how to pray for them, that's a good thing. Uh, my wife Debbie's not here today because she's with my middle son, Mark. Mark uh, is the one that has our four grandchildren. And our, our one-year-old uh, got a hairline fracture in his leg this week and is in a cast. And so she went for that, but she was also going to go anyway because my son Mark has gone through a year-long process and was being presented at his church uh, as an elder at his church. And it's a really big deal uh, of the process and that journey. And Debbie and I are both so proud, thankful for him. And to know he and his wife and the four kids will go up on the stage in front of their church today. Uh, and so she was there to celebrate that. And we're giving thanks. And we're thankful for that and praying also then for the one-year-old for his leg to heal. And it's a hard deal for a one-year-old having a cast. Like not, not, they don't understand. So, yeah, praying for him. And so any other joys or concerns you want to share today? Yes, Jane. My older brother has a birthday this week. This week? Much older brother. Much, yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. Here today. <laughs> no, no doubt, no doubt. Rick, Rick Calhoun, he had his younger sister with him today, and that was a real blessing. So thankful for family ties and birthdays in the family. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Lord, I thank you for your love and your grace, your presence in our lives. You are Emmanuel, God with us. You never leave us or forsake us. Lord, we put our hope, we put our trust in you on so many levels. Uh, many times with our prayer requests are focused on health issues and health things for family and friends. And so, Lord, we thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And we pray for healing for those that we have lifted up. Lord, thankful for health each and every day. We're thankful for our health, for our energy, for the, for the freedom, the blessing of serving you. Lord, we also know there are financial concerns, maybe for the, some in our church right here or the different people that we're in touch with and contact with. And I thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Jireh. You're the Lord, our provider. And so, Lord, we trust you. We thank you, Lord, just for your provision to the church last year. And we pray, Lord, just that you will guide us through this coming year. I thank you for the faithfulness of this congregation and their tithes and offerings as a way to honor you, as a way of worshiping you, as a way that we serve you, Lord. Uh, and so guide our steps and make us good stewards of all that you entrust to us in our lives. We certainly would pray for the backpack program for this year. Thankful for Dean and his leadership, but then also praying for provision to keeping that going, Lord, through this spring semester and knowing that for the children that have food insecurities, that that can be a real blessing for them to have that food on Friday to last through the weekend, Father God. So guide us as we administer that ministry here in the Gladewater and the Union Grove area, Father God. Lord, we pray that you would comfort those who mourn. Uh, and certainly we think of Rick and with the funeral yesterday. But we also, Lord, are thinking of Stephanie uh, and Jason and her family out in California <clears throat> in the recent loss of her mother, Father God. Lord, just also lifting up Loretta, too, just continuing on. Any such blessing seeing Helen here today, Lord, and just knowing that grief is something that's a journey and a process, and it lasts for a season, many times, if not for the rest of our lives, and for grace and strength in that journey. But thank you for love and the people that we love and those that have passed on and that we love them still. Minister comfort and grace and strength. Lord, lift up faith in action for this week. Thankful for the provision for, the, for that ministry and the provision it makes into the community. Guide us in that endeavor, Lord. Thank you for birthdays. 
uh, just like with Daisy's recent birthday or as Jan telling about her brother, Lord, thank you for birthdays. Lord, we lift up our nation today for sure. We're reminded this week of just kind of the confusion of it all and politics and all of that, Lord Jesus. Our hope is not in any person, it's not in any party, Lord. Our hope is in you. So we pray for revival and renewal in the land, Lord God. Hear our prayers today. Hear us, Lord. Oh, we celebrate Jackson too, like in that provision of jobs. That's such a big thing in a young person's life. And we've been praying for that for weeks now, just trusting that it would happen and then to get such a great opportunity. We celebrate and give you thanks for that, Lord God. Today, I lift up Tim Bland too, Lord, with his health, uh, with his leg and just the medicine that he's taking that's so intense. Uh, and so let him feel the love of this body today. I'm certain there's others that I can lift up on things like that, Lord. You know our hearts. You know our prayers. Hear us now as we pray, as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Hey, we don't pass the offering plate, but we have a basket at the back for those of you that are here would like to give. Those of you watching online, there's other ways to give online. Or some of you here at the church may avail yourself of that. Uh, no, if you're writing checks to try to start making the change to just the first Methodist church, uh, it will help. And then you can also pray for us on the financial end because we have to, we're going to have to make all new accounts. We were hoping we could just change the documents underneath everything. It won't, that won't affect you in any way, really, but uh, it will be a journey for us getting that all done. So pray for us on that front. And I am so thankful for God's provision to our church on so many levels and for your faithfulness. God is the giver of every good gift. Let's stand and sing our praise to Him.
it ended up last Sunday that the idea of being led by the Spirit kind of bled into that sermon because it's been on my mind as I've been praying for the series that really is supposed to begin today about being led by the Spirit. Uh, and so uh, looking forward to these coming weeks and talking about for us what it means in our day to be led by the Spirit. A part of that is knowing that it's called to be like Jesus. I've touched this numerous times in my times here, but I want to touch on it and then I'm going to turn a little bit a different way off of that. But uh, to know that Jesus was filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit. A verse I'm going to keep before us during this time is Romans 8, 14. We're going to have the, this is the New Living Translation. And it says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And to know that it can be a normative thing to be led by the Spirit of God. And that's a part of being children of God. A verse I have used regularly in talking about being filled or led by the Spirit is in Luke 4, chapter 1. It's also in Matthew 4, but uh, it's, I like the verbiage of Luke 4. Luke 4, 1, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River, and He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Then we drop down to verse 14, and it says, Then Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. Reports about Him spread quickly through the whole region. So, uh, knowing that Jesus was filled with and led by the Spirit. As I was preparing this week, uh, I, I thought about decisions. And in Joel 3.14, Joel says, Multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the lord is near in the valley of decision when you think of multitudes in the valley of decision i was wondering today how many people even thought about like making the decision i'm going to go to church today and you know like i i look at i look around today and i think most of you like it, it's always great that that decision's already made like hey we're going to church that's an awesome blessing but you know, there's a lot of families that, that start on Friday, they kind of go into the place of making the decision, are we going to go to church? But here's the deal, in our country today, I wonder how many people, it wasn't even on their radar to go to church. It wasn't, a, it wasn't even a decision because it didn't even think about it. And to know that we need to pray for our country and for our nation you know, and, and where does God fit? Where does God fit in our lives? And and making the decision for God to be a part of our lives and, and us to follow Him. Hey, last week's question, I had a question last week as part of the message. Last week's question was, do you want to go deeper in your relationship with God in 2023? Hello, church? Okay. I said, you have to think about the definition of insanity, that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. So if you want to go deeper, that suggests maybe that we have to do something different in order to go deeper, whether it's you know, reading the Bible, praying more, whatever it would be that God would lead us. That's why now we're going to talk about being led by the Holy Spirit for God to show us what He might want us to do to go deeper in our relationship with Him. But then this week's question, here's this week's question. Are you a church member or a disciple of Jesus? Are you a church member or a disciple of Jesus? It's interesting in the 9 o'clock service, somebody quickly said, Both! And that's a good answer. Because if you're a disciple of Jesus, you're probably going to be a church member. And if you're a disciple of Jesus, you're going to probably be a pretty good church member. But the other side of that is there's a lot of people that are church members that it'd be quite, you know, to know if they're a disciple. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, it's going to involve making a decision that you want to be like Jesus. That's what it means. Matthew 10, 24. It's enough for the disciple to be like his master. That's probably 10, 25. But it's enough for the disciple to be like his master so that we want to be like Jesus. It's also going to involve learning how to follow him, to follow Jesus day by day in these modern times. 
In Matthew 4, Jesus went to Peter and Andrew. And what did Jesus say to Peter and Andrew in Matthew 4? He invited them. What did He say? Make fishers of men. Follow Me. He said, follow Me. And that's the key. And I will make you fishers of men. But so the key of that, He said, follow Me. So... We know he ended up with basically 12 guys that followed him around. Okay, we're here today because of the faithfulness of 11 of those guys. But, but when it was Jesus was present, it just meant going where he went. Wherever Jesus went, we go with him. Here's what's interesting. The book of Acts is about the disciples learning how to be disciples without Jesus right there. So the book of Acts is about the disciples learning how to follow Jesus without Him right there. And so a lot of that was them learning how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Which, that's how it comes to us today that we have to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit so that we can follow Jesus. Are you with me, church? Amen. Okay. I'm going to go back for a minute back to the to the Joel. And it says, Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decisions. And so we can think about today there's multitudes of people making decisions. But then we also can think about that we have to make a multitude of decisions every day, right? <laughs> Man, the last, the last. 10 days, I've had to make a bunch of decisions. I mean, a lot of decisions and, and kind of significant decisions, but a bunch of decisions. And so praying to, praying to God you know, to try to make the right decision to be even led by the Holy Spirit. There's a book I like. It's called Choices. And I'm going to read a couple of quotes out of that book, okay? It says, there may be a thousand choices in a day. All of them count. There may be a thousand choices in a day, all of them count. It says, it's the big choices that we make that set our direction, but it's the smallest choices we make that get us to the destination. You cannot manage your life if you do not manage yourself, and you cannot manage yourself if you do not manage your choices. Manage your choices and you will manage your life. I work with youth a lot. I, I like this one. It says, Learning what to choose and how to choose may be the most important education you will ever receive. Learning what to choose and how to choose. Every one of us have a decision-making process. Uh, I would love one day to write a book about your decision-making process. The end result of your life here on earth will always be the sum total of the choices you made while you were here. So let me go back to that first quote. There may be a thousand choices in a day. All of them count. And so we need God's wisdom as we make our decisions day by day, don't we? We need God's wisdom day by day, the decisions that we make. And that's one of the reasons why He's given us His Word. And in fact, even in His Word, James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom... Let him ask of God who gives to all liberally liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. So if we lack wisdom, we can just ask God. But if we ask God, he's probably going to direct us to his word. Okay, And then he also gives us his Holy Spirit. So like in this past week, in the 10 days, if I was walking through all the decisions you know, I had to make, I was praying for wisdom, you know, step by step by step. Just one example, Stephanie asked me if I could come do the funeral for her mom in California and oh I so wanted to do that and so I, I, I sat down I got a good rate on an airline you know, ticket but then I was going to have to rent a car and then I was going to have to stay and then I was going to get in really late on Saturday night and I value like being here to preach on Sunday morning and if anything went wrong in any of that and I was going to fly southwest so you know like <laughs> wow uh and ultimately, I just had to say, Stephanie, I'm very sorry, but I can't do that. You know, they, they, wanted the, they wanted the funeral on Saturday, and I had to say, I can't do that. And that was heartbreaking, you know, not to be able to go be with them and do that. 
so I was praying for wisdom every step and, and, and sorting it out, but just logistically, it didn't look viable. You know what I'm saying? And it was very hard to call her and say, Stephanie, I really think I can't do that uh, and, and not do that. But I do feel like that was the wise decision. So uh, we pray for wisdom. But in the coming week, uh, in the coming weeks, I also want to talk about being led by the Holy Spirit because we're going to look at some of the ways in which we press into the Lord and we grow in our capacity to be what I call led by the Holy Spirit. And certainly that's like in the decisions that we have to make, we need wisdom. But sometimes God will lead us by His Holy Spirit to do stuff we might have not have thought to do. Like today in, in this... In, in church today, I was thinking about a friend of mine, Mike Garst, who in the early 2000s, God put it on his heart to go do a baseball discipleship camp in Germany. And he was led by the Spirit to go do that. He asked me to go to the first one to help him do it because I do mission trips. It was his first time to do a mission trip. So I went with him to Germany to do that mission trip. That was probably like 2001, 2022. He does like five or six. I think this year he's going to do five baseball camps in five different towns with different churches, different people. The number of young people that we have seen get saved, the different things that have happened, all because many years ago he felt led by the Spirit to go do something that he wouldn't have naturally thought to do. And that's also when we look at the book of Acts, that's what we see happening with the disciples. Okay? I need your prayers because here's, here's the way I'm going to do this. I want to start by looking at some, in these first weeks, to start looking at some of the basics about how we prepare ourselves to be led by the Spirit. I've struggled with whether to look at the stories from Acts first and then come more to the basics, and I reserve the right to flip that around. I'm still praying, wanting to be led by the Holy Spirit. You know, because... To, to look to look at the book of Acts. So today I want to I want to look at one of those. If you have your Bibles on your phone or you have your Bible, I want to encourage you today to look at Acts chapter eight, and we're going to start in verse twenty six. Okay. There's there's several of these that I really like in the book of Acts that we're going to look at, and there's going to come a Sunday I preach on this one. But, but I wanted to look at it today to give, to give you an example. When I talk about being led by the Holy Spirit, God speaks through His Word. He can speak through an angel. He can speak through a dream. He can speak through a friend. He can speak through your circumstances. He can speak in that still, quiet voice like to your heart and your spirit. There's multiple ways that God can speak to us that we might call speaking to us by His Spirit. Okay? So in Acts 8, 26, we read, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. How many of you have ever had an angel speak to you? Okay? I never have. Sometimes we read the Bible and we just put it in a different category. Oh, man, an angel. I've never had an angel speak to me. So... So we just check it off like that's not for me. I'm not, you know, I'm not in that category. But I want to tell you that God can speak numerous ways, and one of the ways He can speak is by an angel. And and I would call that being led by the Holy Spirit, even though it was like an angel. Okay, here's what the angel said: Arise and go toward the the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Here's why I want to share this one today because of this next phrase. It says, this is desert. <laughs> because whenever God calls you to do something, it's going to seem strange. You remember when God called you to form your foundation, Terry? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Did, did you have some of those things that popped up like, I don't know how to do that, or I mean, you know, who would ever get into that, or how would that ever happen, you know? And and so God would speak to you about doing something, and and there's an immediate like we we feed it back like this is desert, you know? Uh, I and I can tell you in my life that's all that's one of the ways almost that I know it's God speaking something because I have some reaction like that would be crazy, I'm not doing that, and so in this one. 
the 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 Philip. I don't, you know, Philip didn't write this, but I bet Philip thought it. Like, this is desert. Who's going to go to the desert? Why do you go to the desert? Who would be in the desert? But it's great because Philip, he arose and went. And when we got to the desert, behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. And then the Spirit said to Philip, Now who said that for this time? The Spirit. So it's interesting. An angel appeared to him to tell him to go to the desert. Now as he's there, this time, the Spirit. Man, do I think, do we just sometimes disqualify the Bible? Like no angel's ever spoken to me, so this ain't talking to me. Or then, like, I want, I want to tell you, I, as I work with youth, and grow with them. I like to try to help them know that God can speak and they can hear. And one time I was taking my youth group to minister to another youth group. And I asked my kids, what are we going to talk to them about? And they said, let's talk to them about how you can learn to hear from God. So we had our first session. And one of the kids of that youth group was walking out. And I know that he saved it to say it right by me so I could hear it. As he's walking out, he said pretty loudly, making sure I heard it, if anybody tells me they heard from God, I know they're either crazy or lying. And I want to tell you, sometimes that's out in the world. Like people, if you were to start talking about hearing from God, they look at you like, oh man, you're crazy. You're one of those lunatics, one of those fanatics. And I'm going to tell you, within the church, there are people that will tell you that God doesn't speak anymore. That when God gave us the Word of God, stories like this ceased. Because I didn't need to speak like this anymore because He's given us the Word. But that's not been my experience. That's not what I believe in. There's a lot of people that fall into that, but even within the church, it can be conflicted. But here it says that the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. I got a feeling that means Philip had to run. You know, to catch the chariot to get there. So Philip ran, it says, he ran to him and he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. And he said, do you understand what you were reading? And the eunuch, Ethiopian eunuch said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. And the place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humil humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? Anybody know where in Isaiah that's taken? Isaiah 53. And it is all about Jesus. Isaiah 53 is all about Jesus. It's a prophetic word about Jesus. So this eunuch is reading this prophetic word. God sends Philip. He gets there. He hears what he's reading. And he begins to, to share. He said, he, he said uh, the eunuch answered Philip, said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? Philip opened his mouth and began, beginning at this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. Where are they at? desert and all of a sudden right at this moment they come to some water and the eunuch said see here is water what hinders me from being baptized philip said if you believe with all your heart you may and he answered and said i believe that jesus christ is the son of god hey we just had Rhonda's funeral here yesterday and we believe we know Rhonda went to heaven right because she was such a good woman and she had such a precious smile and she was so loving. That's why she went to heaven, right? No. Because she believed in Jesus. She said that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We sometimes could add things like He died for my sin. You know, the atoning sacrifice. That's why my sins are forgiven. So the eunuch declared his faith in Jesus that, that Philip had just told him about. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. This eunuch went back to Ethiopia and he began to preach the gospel. And he carried the gospel 
to Ethiopia. It's one of the first African nations to receive the gospel and preach, and it was from this unit. All because Philip obeyed to go where? To the desert. And so many times God will say something or speak something, we'll feel a prompting, a leading, maybe even a calling, and 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 but our, almost always our first web some like, I can't do that, or that seems crazy, or and that's something to me that's become a sign that maybe God's speaking because it's something I wouldn't have thought of. It seems like a crazy idea. Past several days, I got to go to a, a men's retreat that my middle son sponsored, and he has some of his closest friends and guys they disciple that come to this conference. But this conference is modeled over a conference after a conference that I do that in 2014, the Lord put on my heart to do a men's conference. I hadn't thought of that, okay. And, and I got excited about it, and but put it together. And now here, eight years later, I get to go to a men's conference that my son is doing for some really awesome young men. I get to pray for those young men and interact with them. But a lot of that flows from obedience that was eight years ago and walking that out over these years. I get excited to know what God will call us to do, what, how we, He would call us to be led by His Holy Spirit. And so, so some of the most awesome things in my life that I have been involved in have been the things where I felt led by God's Holy Spirit to do this or to do that. And sometimes it seemed really crazy. And yet I've seen God work in miraculous ways. And doing discipleship then with guys and men to see them and to hear them as how God's leading and how God is guiding them to be led by the Holy Spirit. So that's the point of teaching these messages over these coming weeks is to encourage us. Jesus would always quite often say in teaching, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And that's what I'm praying for us in these days. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I thank you, Lord, that you speak by your Holy Spirit or by angels or by dreams any number of ways that you lead us by your Holy Spirit. We're asking you, Lord, to tune our hearts that we would listen, that we would hear, that we would obey, and the things that you would lead us into for your kingdom and your glory. Lord, we're ready. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' holy, powerful name, amen. Let's stand today to join together to close. <clears throat>
be sure and call him today and check on him and let him know you're praying and tell him we came real close to singing his name a couple of times in church today. Yeah, yeah, Mel, Mel, Mel. Show for Melanie. It could be, yeah. It could be a Melanie. So uh, you know a Mel or a Melanie uh, today in early church, a uh, precious little girl named Michelle. Uh, came today, uh, the early service, but, but Mel kept showing up, so you never know. So Mel or Melanie, give them a call, let them know you love them, you're praying for them. Hey, look around today, uh, here in the sanctuary, and give thanks that we're a part, think of who might not be here, for those of you watching online, you're included in this. Who are we? We are Christ's family. And we have come to worship the Lord and to give Him praise. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you now to lead us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. I pray God's blessings on you today and in this week, and that God will lead us by His Spirit to ever greater degrees. In Jesus' name, amen.